Hey guys, I wanted to do a video today on shoes. I know a lot of us tend to ask Santa for new running shoes for Christmas, so I thought I would go over all the different things to consider when picking out a shoe for working out at the gym, maybe you're an outdoor runner, so I've got lots of tips to share with you today. So the first thing I want to talk about is all the different brands out there. You can spend anywhere from $50 to $250, depending on which brand you pick and all the different features that that particular shoe might have. I have a bunch of different ASICs down here to show you, and uh, there's lots of components of the shoe that you need to consider. So first off is when do you need to get new shoes? So I took a walk uh, this week and realized, wow, my feet are really hurting. And lo and behold, I figured out it's time for me to replace my shoes. So I had this right here. This is an Asics Gel Cayano, and I bought these earlier in the year. And then if you flip them over and you look, look how much tread is worn off on the bottom of that shoe. That tells me it's, it's dead shoe. It's time for new shoes. If you look at the bottom of this shoe, you can see I've got some tread wear. I might have a little bit more life in this guy, but not much. So ideally, this is another Asics. I've got lots of good tread. I can see all my tread, nothing's worn down. This is what the bottom of your shoe should look like. Okay, so the second thing I wanna consider when picking out a different shoe is the construction of it. There's lots and lots of different options out there. Um, the first option I want to show you is, so this is a Ciccone Hurricane, and it's got different kinds of plastic um, on the sides in addition to different kinds of mesh. If you kind of look at this shoe, it's pretty much kind of flat. That plastic component really doesn't provide a lot of support up top. Whereas if I look at this shoe, this is a gel cumulus, look at how much structure and firmness and support I have all through the shoe. So I like firm mesh with less plastic. The second thing we're gonna consider is the back of the shoe. It's the heel. So I've got a really flat heel back here. This might feel good for some people, doesn't work for me. So I like a ridged back. A ridged back right here. This snugs my heel really well. It doesn't allow my foot to pop out and provides a lot more um, support in the back. The next thing I want to consider is the amount of cushion. So there's tons of different varieties out there and I need a ton of cushion. I have terrible feet so more cushion the better. So when it comes to cushion these are the inserts that go inside your shoe. Almost nothing. Teeny, teeny, tiny a bit of cushion that goes in your shoe from the insert perspective. If we look here on the Hurricane, look how much, all of this is cushion. This is a ton of cushion. So look at the side of your shoe when you're looking for that amount of cushion. Um, if you look here, it's some, it's a little bit less in this guy. And then I look here, look how much cushion here. So the side of your shoe will be your guide. So don't go by the inserts, go by the side of the shoe. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how do you walk? How do you run? There's lots of different things to consider when picking your shoe, especially if you have stability issues. So stability meaning, do you walk flat? Do you pronate? Do you walk on the insides of your feet? or do you supinate? Do you walk on the outsides of your feet? So the best way to determine this is flip that shoe over. You're gonna look to see where that is rubbing. Is it in the back? Is it on one side? Do you feel like your ankles are kind of buckling when you're walking or running? So that would be something that you would go to a professional shoe store or you would see a foot doctor to have your gait analyzed. So. If you walk on the insides, you're going to need a shoe with stability. You can have ones that um, provide more of an arch support. So if you've got flat feet, you pronate. There's shoes that are designed for arch supports. So if you look at your shoe, 
Let me grab a good one here. So this guy does have some arch support. So it's gonna be a hard plastic piece here. You can kind of see it under the bottom. This is showing me it's got some arch support. So this is not a completely flat shoe. If I look over here on my Ciccone, I don't have that plastic piece. This is more of a neutral shoe. So most of your shoes will kind of have an arch and that'll show you where that additional arch support is gonna be. So the next thing I wanna talk about is buying your shoes online. So if you're not really sure and you know you don't have feet problems or something more advanced, you can use the shoe finder tabs on major websites. So Asics has it, I know Nike does it. So you would just go on the manufacturer's website and find their shoe finder. And the one on ASICs that I use when I'm trying to decide what kind of shoe I want to buy um, has a lot of different options. So the first one is, do you run on the road? Are you a trail runner? What is your distance? Do you do a lot of miles? So do you need a lot more cushion and support? Are you just a weekend warrior? So don't need a whole lot of support and cushion. And then you can also pick things like, do you want to run faster? Do you want to run further? Do you need a lightweight shoe for running faster? Do you need more cushion for running further? Then you can check out the stability. Do you need a neutral shoe? No foot problems. Do you pronate? Do you supinate? Different components of shoes that way. And then how much cushion do you need? Don't need a whole lot. You don't have to have such a thick shoe. For me, I need a lot, a lot of cushion. So I tend to have the maximum cushion when I'm picking my shoe. So then they'll tabulate all that information and give you a list of different options that you can purchase or you can find somewhere else. So what I do is I go on my shoe finder, I pick out the shoe that's best for me, and then I find it in a store. I try it on, I walk around. Just because the shoe finder says it works great for you doesn't mean it feels good. I tried on a pair of Brooks last year, did not fit my foot, even though it said it was the perfect shoe for me didn't feel good. So I went back to Old Faithful Asics. So my other tip too is, okay, you find your shoe, you say, okay, I'm going to buy the Asics Gel Cayano. This is a $160 shoe. Did I pay $160? No way. So this one is the 25. So Asics Gel Cayano Model 25. They are currently selling the 27 model. So this is a two model different. This cost me about 80 bucks. So I saved a ton of money because I bought two years older or two models older than the current one on the market. Most of the time they are changing the color. Maybe they're making the mesh fancier. They may change the shoelace. They're not really doing a whole lot of construction changes to your shoe. But perfect example here. This is the Asics Gel Cumulus 18. Then we go Asics Gel Cumulus 19. May not be able to tell the difference here. This is a complete shoe overhaul. They did a major overhaul within that one year period. Didn't really like these. Love these because they changed the fit and it fit better for me. So most of the time, go online, find a model or two older. You'll save anywhere from $50 to $100. Well, I hope this shoe guide helped you figure out what the best pair of running shoes are for you. There's lots of different options out there. Remember to do your research. What kind of runner are you? Where do you run? How much do you run? And also use my tips on buying them online more affordably than going straight to the manufacturer's website. If you have any questions or want some extra advice, feel free to contact any of your LSE trainers and we can give you some pointers.